I'm so excited to be finally filming the leap year book tag. Thank you so much, Amy, for tagging me in this challenge. I have her channel linked below. This is a book tag that she created along with Hillary from Melted Books. They are both amazing booktubers. Their info is linked down below. Please check out their channels, show them some love, and let's get right on into the tag. I'm really excited about this one. What I really, really like about this tag is that I feel like I've kind of found books for each answer that I've not really gotten to talk about much on my channel. So I'm gonna get to spread the book love today. And again, just get to some things that might not typically come up in some of my book conversations. So question number one is an extra day. What is a book that brought something a little extra? So for this one, I have to go with, I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reid. I just listened to this audio book on my Scribd account and I loved it. Let me just say, the narrator went hard and it paid off. I thought it was just so creepy. I don't know if it has the same effect just picking up the book and reading it because again this narrator got under my skin. I don't know but anyway it just it definitely brought something a little extra. Question number two is taking a big leap. What is a book that you were or you are afraid to read? Oh, I have to get up. Okay wait I'm coming right back. Okay. I'm back. For this one, I'm going with I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This has been on my TBR since before it came out. I am obsessed with this case and I have to admit, oh, I should explain what it's about. This is, as the subtitle suggests, one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer. I listened to this, whoa. I listened to this extensive multi-part podcast on case file the case file podcast the australian narrator it terrified me and i listen to true crime podcasts i read scary books true crime books i watch documentaries like that not much gets to me anymore and something about this case freaks me out. I also just recently moved and so I get kind of spooked at night anyway and so when I sit down to read, I don't know, I'm just kind of scared to get this one started. I think just because it's about um, a home intruder, like this guy's MO was that he would break into people's homes and scout them out and watch them and ah, uh, I don't know, it kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety even though um, I do consume a lot of this type of content. So. It'll be interesting to see once I do get to it, but I am pretty nervous about it. Question number three is every four years, what is the fourth book that you read this year? So I went back on my Goodreads to check this out and I'm counting from like the fourth book that I started and finished this year. And that would be My Friend Dahmer by Durf Bakdurf. I know I was just talking about how I consume a lot of true crime content. This is a great example of that. So let me scoot over so I can put up a little graphic for you. This is a graphic novel. I don't read a lot of graphic novels, but I did check it out from my local library. Again, before all of the self-isolation rules came into play. In case you didn't know, Jeffrey Dahmer was a cannibalistic serial killer. And this graphic novel is written by and illustrated by someone who grew up with Dahmer and knew him in high school. The illustrations were just so odd, not in a bad way, but they were just blocky and unnatural, but also very, very well done. And I just felt like all of that combined made me feel uneasy while I was reading. Question number four, 366 days in a year. Look at the third shelf on your TBR shelf and find the sixth book on that shelf and then the sixth book after that. Okay, so this is my TBR cabinet. I'm going to count this as shelf number one. <laughs> it's just a little basket that sits on top. This is shelf two and this is shelf three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the sixth book after that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. I'm actually really glad. These are two books that I've never mentioned on my channel before. Okay, so the sixth book was Tell the Machine Goodnight by Katie Williams. I thrifted this maybe a few months ago and the cover I found, it's, I don't know if you can, if it's showing up on camera, but it's a matte cover with these beautiful colors. It's sci-fi. So it's about this woman who works for this company that has this machine where they can tell people exactly what is going to make them happy, almost like prescriptions, like getting a dog will make you happy, just as an example. 
but it's ironic because her she has a son who is unhappy and she feels like she can't fix that part of her life even though it's her job to give out these happiness prescriptions. I just really liked the cover and then when I read more about it, it interested me. So maybe I'll get to it soon. I actually forgot about it a little bit. So this one's American War by Omar el -Akkad. This book is about a fictional second American Civil War and this girl's revenge quest. That's about all I know. I did start this book. Oh my gosh. I used a bath bomb tag as a bookmark, but I made it to page 12, which is not very good. This tag is making me want to go back through some of these books I've forgotten about and give them a second chance. Yeah, I'm actually excited about this now. I might start it tonight. Question number five, leaping ahead. Name four books that you want to read by the next leap year or name something on your bookish bucket list that you want to complete by the next leap year. I don't know if I have anything on, on a bookish bucket list, but I can definitely name four books that I want to read by the next leap year. I know I've got one right here. Okay, it's Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel like this is never gonna happen but here's to wishful thinking i actually don't know what it's about except for that maybe the main character plays tennis i play tennis i'm a tennis instructor so that drew me in david foster wallace was also on the pro tour he was a pro doubles player i think just doubles he might have played some singles too but he struggled a lot with his mental health and has since passed away and i feel like this is such a masterpiece when people do discuss this book but from what I understand, you just about have to have tabs and bookmarks for the book and the story and then tabs and bookmarks for the footnotes. Everyone's like, yeah, read this one with two bookmarks. I just don't know if I'm ready for that. So maybe I'll get it in before the next leap year. We'll see. And just another one that comes to mind that is just massive that I actually put in my video about 12 books I want to read in 2020. And I chose 12 because I thought maybe one of these a month would be manageable. We'll see. But it's 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami, who is one of my favorite authors. It's just a huge book, and I actually think it is in two separate parts. Who makes a two like that? I think it's in two separate parts, but I'm just counting it as one book. Like, I really would like to get to that soon as well. Another one is Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I've tried to read this book four different times, and most recently, I was on the hold list at my library for this digital audiobook, whatever for a few months and it finally came through and I listened to the first 20 minutes and turned it back in. <laughs> I want to like it so bad and it's just not working. I've, I've picked it up so many times. So this is about the Chicago World Fair, like late 1800s. And then that's part of the story. And then the other part of the story follows H.H. Holmes, who was, I think America's first or most, you know, first most notorious serial killer getting back on the serial killers for the video. It just sounds like a lot of stuff that I'm interested in and that I should like. And the writing is actually very well done. I can't get into it. And if you have read it and you have loved it, please convince me to pick it back up because I really wanna get this one under my belt because I really do think I would enjoy it. Oh, and one more. When I was talking about footnotes earlier, it made me think of this. Um, the People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. This has such an interesting concept. It's about this doctor who comes across this tribe. I think he's a doctor. He's a doctor or scientist who comes across this tribe of people who have found this way to basically immortalize their bodies and keep their youth, but their mind continues to age. And it's just so interesting. As you can see, I still have my bookmark in here. I did make it to page 66 of this. If I remember correctly, the narrator's almost unreliable here. So you kind of have to read between the lines on how the story's being told. And then you also have to do a bit of your own research, like looking at the footnotes and then checking the back or check in. I don't, or maybe not the back, I guess not the back, but like, here's a great example. This page is all book. Then the book stops here and this is all footnotes so that is intimidating to me but I do want to get it read just because I'm such a fan of this author question number six is leapfrog name a book on your tbr that has green on it I know exactly which one I want to talk about the stranger in the woods by Michael Finkel green <laughs> this is about a man who lived alone in the woods in Maine for 27 years so he became this hermit um 
and just his life, like how he lived on his own. Just an interesting book. But yeah, I always love this spine. It you, It's not picking up on camera, but it's like green woods and it almost looks like blades of grass and I think it's really cute. Question number seven is bad luck. What bookish things do you steer clear from? I've put a little bit of thought into this one and I don't have any immediate tropes that come into mind that I would avoid or like a genre I would avoid but I do avoid dog earring pages. I do use bookmarks or like receipts whatever I have closest to me. I don't like folding the corners. It doesn't really bother me when other people do it. It's just a personal preference. I, I just I don't do it. I steer clear from that. Number eight, the last task of this book tag is to tag four friends. So tagging these four friends here, their channels will be linked in the description of this video. I want you to go check out every single one of them. Alrighty, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.